Hey everyone, I'm Amy and I'm here in my kitchen and today I am making spaghetti bolognese. I'm so happy you're here cooking with me. This is a little bit of an untraditional recipe, so just follow along with me and I'll show you where it's different when I'm cooking. Um, I am starting out by, by uh, roasting a whole head of garlic. And you know what's interesting about this? I had a really hard time finding garlic in the stores, so I dug out garlic from like the back of my fridge and I would never normally cook with garlic that looks like this. If you can see in the middle, it's green. That is not what you wanna cook with. These are like the germ in the middle of the garlic has started to age and it kind of imparts a little bit of a bitter flavor, I hate to say, but I'm gonna use it anyway because that's all I have. And this dish cooks so long that it won't be that noticeable. So anyway, I am going to roast garlic and this is how I do it. I cut the very top of a whole head of garlic off and then I drizzle some olive oil and some salt, and I'm going to wrap this up and pop it in my oven. It's 350 degrees for 30 minutes. So in it goes. But of course, I made one ahead of time, and my culinary friends are making fun of me because I'm doing swaps for my cooking videos, but it's worth it. So I made this garlic ahead of time. Look how nice and caramelized it gets. It's really gorgeous, isn't it? So I am going to come over to the stove. Katie, can you grab me a dish towel behind you? Can you do that with the camera? Barely. Don't put your finger on the bottom either. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have my, um, my Le Creuset, and this is a medium size. I have this heated up, it's like on a medium heat, and all I'm gonna do is squeeze, come over here, Katie, so you can show this. I'm gonna squeeze all of this delicious roasted garlic right into the pan. And I don't even really need any olive oil, any extra olive oil. You might need it, but in this case, I don't. Let me take this out. And that is like the foundation for this delicious spaghetti bolognese. It smells amazing. Yeah, there's nothing better than roasted garlic. I highly recommend it. Okay, so I'm stirring that around and now I'm gonna add my beef. And this is a pound of, of ground beef. It's um, something that I always have in my freezer in case I wanna make like a really easy sauce like bolognese. And it's just, you know, it's just a pantry staple. So I have my beef in here. I'm turning my heat up to high. I normally wouldn't advise this. I'm doing this because of the video. I just wanna sort of speed up cooking my ground beef so you're not bored with me cooking, <laughs> me cooking ground beef low and slow all day. But if you're making it at home, I wouldn't do it this high. I mean, I've done this so many times, it's not a big deal for me. I won't burn it, but you could definitely burn your meat. You could burn your garlic. You what would you advise for what heat and how long? I would say you would want to cook your meat for about five to seven minutes, maybe even 10 minutes at medium. And what typically the best way to cook ground beef, I mean, you really just want to brown it or cook it through to the point where you would pretty much eat it, be able to eat it. Um, it doesn't have to be all cooked through. There can be little splotches of pink, but for the most part, you want it all the way cooked through. Question and, from Olivia, what kind yeah. of cut and how lean should the beef be? That's a really good question, Olivia. The, what I like to do when I'm making a bolognese with ground beef is to use the leanest beef I can find because you don't want like a greasy sauce. I mean, it's one thing to make a burger and have 80% lean, 20% fat ground beef, and that's the ratio. But for something like this, I go for like 93% lean, 7% fat. And I know fat equals flavor, but there's a lot of other flavor in here. So you don't really need the flavor of the fat in the meat to make this really delicious. And I'm as soon as I get this beef pretty, pretty brown, I'm gonna start layering in the flavor and you'll see what I'm talking about. Yumi says hi. Hi, Yum. Yumi, hi. Are you gonna make this, Yumi? I hope so. It's really easy. 
Mr. Cannon says that he and Nanny are going to make this. Oh, Marty, that's great. You're going to get away from fish? I can't believe it. Anna's wondering what are other good pasta shape alternatives? That's another good question. So the interesting thing about this recipe, this is like a... This is an Italian recipe, bolognese. It's from the Bologna region of Italy. So it is steeped in Italian tradition. And in, in, in Italy, when you're cooking pasta, I'm adding about a half a cup of wine, by the way. So, uh, splash more. <laughs> if it wasn't one o'clock on a Sunday, well, I mean, I guess I, I should be drinking a glass of wine as I cook this because, you know, we're all quarantined, but. Say la vie. Say la vie. But anyway, to get back to your question, the classic pasta that goes with bolognese is tagliatelle, which is a flat pasta. It's like spaghetti that's been squashed. I don't know why I'm calling it spaghetti bolognese because I'm not even using spaghetti for this recipe. I couldn't find tagliatelle in the store and going to the store is like hell right now. So I'm using linguine and I figured that's a pretty close to tagliatelle, so it's gonna be linguine, and I guess I'll change the name to linguine bolognese. So as you can see, Katie, come on over here. I have ground beef and my wine and my garlic, and it's not that pretty, but this is exactly what you want it to look like. I'm gonna get the, the wine reduced a little bit. Um, Speaking of wine, yeah. Olivia's wondering if you can use red or white wine. Um, that's what, that's interesting, Olivia. I mean, you being the wine expert, could you get back to me on that? I actually think red wine would be really good in this too. Um, I've always used white wine and now I'm thinking I don't really know why because red wine would be great. Um, the thing that's so good about wine is it adds a really great layer of flavor, whether it's red or white. And the wine, the alcohol in the wine cooks out as the heat hits the wine. So there's no worry about having, you know, alcohol in your bolognese. It's really just the residual flavor. And when the wine cooks like this and I'm reducing it, it just like brings out a really good layer of flavor. It's one look. more layer. We're about halfway through. Yeah, okay, great. She so, says she'll ask her dad to let us know yeah, what G says, yeah, Olivia. Let me know, Olivia. DM me and let me know, and I'll and I'll let everybody else know. You know, a lot of Italian cooking it goes back to these very traditional recipes that nobody ever does anything different. Um, and speaking of that, this is how I changed up my bolognese. Traditional bolognese is first. Let me add the milk. So this is like traditional bolognese. You add a little milk into your into your uh, ragu and that's like kind of a weird thing but it gives it a really nice richness it gives the sauce a richness that i don't really see in any other sauces but getting back i know it's not that pretty <laughs> but it's worth it it's really delicious when i add the tomatoes it's going to become really pretty um so anyway the traditional bolognese is a com it's a mirepoix that you saute first, and a mirepoix is a very classic combination of onion, celery, and carrots all chopped up. And that's sort of the backbone of classic bolognese, but I like roasted garlic. I just feel like the flavor is a little bit more assertive, and it just really works. So, I don't know. I feel like I'm a home cook, and I can sort of switch it up a little bit. That's what works for me, and that's what I've always done. So. Anyway, Caroline Rausch, hi, hope you're watching. She, rec she asked if I would make this. And so Caroline, I hope you're not disappointed that I'm not making a classic bolognese, but I really think that this is a really good way to make it. And it's very comforting. All of the ingredients we have at home. If you don't want to roast a whole head of garlic and want to do it the classic way you can, it's probably a small onion, a carrot, and a celery stalk all chopped up and sauteed in a little olive oil. And then continue with this recipe. And by the way, I will put this recipe along with this video on IGTV and in my Instagram feed. Okay, so this is coming to a simmer. And now I'm gonna add my tomatoes. 
What kind of tomatoes are those? These are San Marzano, and this is what I love. These are whole tomatoes. San Marzano comes from the San Marzano region in Italy, and they just, you know, a lot of it's like the terroir, the, the soil that the tomatoes grow in. It just makes them really flavorful and delicious. It's really all I cook with. I'm turning my heat down to medium now. So this is, you know, something that I really, that I love and they're pretty easy to find. You just look for San Marzano on the can. And this is a big can, it's 28 ounces. So what I'm doing now is these tomatoes are whole. They're peeled and they're whole. And I'm just pushing my wooden spoon up against the side of the pot and sort of crushing it. And the longer this cooks, the easier this will be for the tomatoes. And I'm just gonna let this cook. I'm gonna bring this to a low simmer and let it cook. And it's gonna cook for about two hours. Now, you've noticed I haven't seasoned it with any salt at all. And the reason why is because you wanna be really careful when you're making something that's gonna cook for a long time when you season with salt. If you over season at this point, it's really hard to take that away. So I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of salt, like a pinch. And as it cooks, I'm gonna taste, 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 and I'm gonna adjust the seasoning as I go. So don't put a ton of salt in right now. You're definitely gonna to need to add salt, but don't go crazy at this point. Okay, so this is what it looks like right now. I'm gonna turn this off because I made another batch this morning. Jake's wondering if you have a brand preference for sauce. Hey Jake, a brand preference for sauce? For San Marzano tomatoes? Yes. Um, you know, that's not, I don't really have a brand preference, but I like to buy San Marzano tomatoes that have a sticker on them, a DOP, and that means they're authentic. And I was just, I was actually looking at this and I don't see a DOP on these, so that's why I didn't say it. But usually authentic San Marzano tomatoes, they're certified. It says here, product of Italy, this, the San Marzano name, but there's this, a DOP sticker, which I don't really see here. So, but this is kind of cool. This is the map of Italy, and this is the San Marzano region. Just a little, little culinary knowledge for you. Okay, so this is what the sauce looks like after two hours, and you can see it's completely different. I simmered this for two hours really low and slow. I didn't cover the pot. I just let it simmer. And then at the very end, I added a little bit of parsley. I would have preferred to add basil, but I couldn't find any, so parsley it is. How much time do I have, Katie? Two minutes. Uh-oh, okay. All right, I'm gonna show you how to plate really fast. I made some pasta. This is my linguine. Let's pretend it's tagliatelle. <laughs> and I'm going to spoon some sauce. Oh my gosh, yum. And come over here because we can't not have a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Katie, do you want this for lunch or should we share it? We'll share it. Okay. Trying to not gain the quarantine 15, <laughs> but it's so, so we good. we went running this morning. Yes. And then if I had basil, I would garnish it with a little basil, but I don't. So, and I don't even have a big, I don't even have a fork to taste this, but I think you get the picture. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great Sunday. Take care, see you soon.